Greetings. Once again, it's time to have another chat about uh, one of the components. You've seen the title. It's going to be about aluminum cases versus magnesium cases and you know, whether or not the uh, these new aluminum cases may or may not be able to uh, enhance our ability to make an efficient, more powerful, more high MPG type motor. Uh, we're going to take a look at uh, of course, the Samba. Uh, I think I'll go over to Shop Talk forums. I'm going to look at a uh, just a mechanical engineering website to get some properties of uh, uh, these alloys. And uh, I'm going to go downstairs and describe to you in nauseating detail how it is that the heat runs its way through the cases and either warms up the oil or doesn't warm up the oil, and uh, how that particular flow of heat through the system uh, is going to impact your mileage and your ability to get mileage or generate additional power from whatever it is that you're building. So anyway, I hope that this one's going to be interesting and not terribly long. Thanks. Let's get to it. Okay, so right there we've got a little an acronym called AS41. This defines the alloy of the magnesium cases. And uh, there's two kinds of magnesium cases. Everybody seems to like the AS21 case versus the AS41 case. And uh, just for the heck of it, the uh, A corresponds to the 4, the S corresponds to the 1. The A stands for aluminum. The 4 stands for 4%. The S stands for silicon. The 1 stands for 1%. Uh, that means that the AS21 2 percent aluminum, 1 percent silicon, 97 percent magnesium. And apparently the more magnesium you get in these things, the stronger they are. Thus the AS21 is the more strong case. I don't think it's going to make that big a difference. I think these guys are griping over fractional bits of strength. Okay, we need to take a look at the thermal conductivity of our alloys. Okay, we've got aluminum and we've got magnesium. So this aluminum is at uh, right there, 150. Let's go find some magnesium. This one's going to be close enough. Whereas AS, uh, let's say 41 stands for aluminum silicon. It's AZ zinc. Z is going to be zinc, and the zinc replaces the silicon at 1%. The aluminum is 3%. It's right between the A's 21, 41. It's roughly the same alloy. It's 100 right there. Which means that the aluminum transmits heat 50% better. 50% better than magnesium. You need to go no further than that. And nothing else needs to be said. Aluminum transmits heat 50% better than magnesium. Below 140 horsepower, right there. I would go with the magnesium case. And a lot of these guys will tell you that. Oh, you're not running enough horsepower to concern yourself with the magnesium case. Sorry, an aluminum case. But my channel is about what can you do with the aluminum case that may or may not help you make mileage. So whether it's horsepower based or not, it doesn't matter. It's about whether or not it can help you or hinder you in making mileage. Good question. Why are the aluminum cases running hotter than the magnesium alloy cases? I appreciate this guy getting in here and attempting to explain this. The denser aluminum radiates the heat out more evenly. No idea what he's saying there. Density has nothing to do with uh, the radiative properties of the metal, but more slowly. Well, we just saw that aluminum has uh, a significantly higher thermal transfer rate. I have no idea why he's talking about it being slower. It's not. Considerably less dense. Magnesium, sure. Less heat retention. Yeah, it has less thermal mass, but that's got nothing to do with the heat transfer. Anyway, hey, at least the guy gave it a stab. Oh, here's somebody's thoughts on the temperature differential. The temperature difference between the mag and aluminum cases shouldn't be a problematic factor. Well, it's nice that they say shouldn't, but you have to really, you got to really think about it, and this guy has not. Oh, this could be good. I'm so tired of people saying that the aluminum cases run hotter and weigh a lot more. Well, they do weigh more, and they do run hotter. 
Let's see what this guy's got to say. Think about it. Aluminum is more dense, so it will weigh more. Not necessarily. What if it was made of thinner walls? It might be lighter and be stronger as a result. No, mass does not necessarily equate to strength. Suppose I built my case out of, uh, let's call it lead. Super heavy. It would be like a friggin' mushroom. Just squash it with your hand, it'd be so soft. It would be super dense. So no, density does not, uh, does not describe the metallurgical stiffness properties of your metal. As long as this design is right, it will be inherently stronger than magnesium case. Yeah, but it's not because of the density of the material, it's because of the strength of the material. Uh-oh, and then he jumps on to it. Also as a result of its density, again, it's just density. It will have a harder time dissipating the heat. No, that's got nothing to do with it. How much harder? Depends on the combo. No, it doesn't depend on the combo. The case either dissipates heat or the case does not dissipate heat. Okay? What combo? What's that got to do with anything? If it got to an extreme and extreme application, it could be ceramic coated with heat dissipating coating. Oh, he's talking about radiation, secondary coolings, as opposed to directly blowing air through your oil cooler or passing air down over your, your heads and uh, your cylinders. Uh, we're talking about radiant coating. No, radiant, radiant cooling is such a minor part of what's going on that uh, no, radiant, radiant has nothing to do with how your motor cools. They're air and oil cool, not radiant cool. It's got nothing to do with it. <laughs> this is funny. Oh, however, this is all highly dependent on which type and where exactly is the oil temperature sender actually located. Uh, okay, so in other words, what this guy's saying is, is that no matter what your oil temperature is, you can have hotter or lower oil temperature depending on where you put your oil temperature send, uh, sending unit. Well, that's just the sending unit. That doesn't mean your oil temperature changed. It just means you moved your oil sender around. Come on, dude, man. Go with the program. Understand what it is you're trying to say. Okay, here's his experience. It showed a much higher running temperature. Sure, we know that. They say they run 10 to 20 degrees higher. We're going to go with 20. It took much longer to cool down after a run. Well, of course it did. It has, you know, I mentioned earlier, it's got greater thermal mass. Okay, right here we have a skeptic. As far as the oil temps running 20 degrees higher, I doubt it. Um, yeah, there are definite metallurgical reasons and structural reasons why the cases run hotter. They do run hotter. Usually it's anecdotal evidence, but there are enough of these anecdotal people out there saying that it runs hotter. Yeah, it does run hotter. They are real heavy. Okay. Yeah, we know about that. You know, you're trying to make mileage. You don't necessarily want to haul an extra 20 pounds around with if you don't have to. Uh, I don't think anybody actually knows how much heavier. So one of the problems is, is that uh, there's two kinds of these aluminum cases. There's the stock. And there's the bubble tops. I believe the bubble tops are heavier. And everybody just comes in here and says, well, this guy's 22 pounds heavier. That one's 16 pounds heavier. Do I know which one you happen to be reporting on? I mean, it doesn't really tell me anything. But I imagine the stock ones are probably on the lower end. Those bubble tops are probably the ones that are 20 plus. Apparently, there's another manufacturer out there other than uh, Autolinea. It produces these cases, but uh, as this thing says, the TF case looks real nice, but a lot more money. I've gone to the website and looked at what they have. It does seem nice, but uh, yeah, I don't think that uh, for us, mild, it's not going to be worth it. <laughs> it's so funny. For street engine under 200 horsepower, I'd use magnesium. Wow, can you imagine that? 200 horsepower. Okay, so the magnesium case, according to this guy, is strong enough to handle four times stock horsepower. Okay, I kind of disagree with that. Um, I think if I was going to 200 horsepower, I would not attempt to try and cram that much into a, uh, a streetable magnesium uh, motor. But again, once again, we hear this. 20 pounds, 20 degrees cooler. So, yeah, 20 pounds and 20, 20 and 20 on the, on the aluminum case. Oh, here's an interesting comment. I'm using aluminum 
and the extra weight doesn't sound bad till you have to wrestle the thing around. I dread having to pull the engine. Uh, he also continues on, my old temps are also on the high side for my liking. So he added a remote cooler. Hey, check it out. We're going to go to Shop Talk Forums. I don't always do these guys, but uh, kind of interesting. Anyway, some of these uh, engine cases, aluminum equals hot. I personally prefer the magnesium case for 1.6 to 1776 6,000 RPM race engines. I believe it's slightly better heat dissipation. I have no idea where he's coming up with that. Uh, magnesium is not as good a conductor as aluminum is. So it does not dissipate heat better. It's considerable weight advantage. Well, there is the weight advantage, yes. So that part is good, but it does not dissipate heat better. You guys understand when I read this stuff. You know, I, I have a hard time reading the same. Because I read it, I just go, no, no, you're wrong, no, no, wrong, incorrect, misspelled, wrong word, complete and total wrong concept. It is so hard, so hard to read this stuff. No, and, and, and so far I have seen nobody who really understands what is going on and how it's going to impact what happens. So the discussion is about whether to use a magnesium case, a magnesium, or an aluminum case. And uh, of course we're building what most would consider to be an economy motor, a uh, high mileage and uh, extended performance stock. Uh, most people out there would consider them not to be high performance, but uh, like I say, they are their own special breed of high performance. And, uh, you know, you go to the Samba, they're going to tell you, oh, dude, look, if you're not doing 140 horsepower, you don't need aluminum, just get the magnesium. Well, uh, there is, of course, the issue of the 20 degree temperature difference that your oil will see should you go from this guy to an aluminum. And uh, that 20 degree temperature difference is pretty much what this video is about. So, how does it happen? Of course, we uh, hopefully by this point in time I've uh, discussed with you about, uh, you know, what's over there on the Samba shop top form. And uh, so you've heard what some other people think. Now let me tell you what's actually happening. Alright, first of all, what makes the motor get hot? And uh, there is only one answer to that, and I've had this in many of my videos. There's only that one particular thing that makes things get hot is the burning of gasoline, which happens right down there at the end of the spark plug hole, which is approximately right below my finger right down here. One, two, three, forty places. So, you burn the gasoline right there, and heat starts flowing into the head. Poof, it goes out. The head, top of the cylinder, okay, you don't really get a lot of heat transfers, the piston falls. It's always when the piston's up at the top, that's where the heat transfer is. That's why they've got big fins at this end. So, the heat goes into here, the heat goes into that. This is made out of metal, so clearly the heat's going to flow down through the metal, because metal is a conductor. It gets to this interface right here. This is metal to metal. Even if you have spacers in there, even the spacers are metal, and I do have spacers in here, so you go metal to metal to metal. Alright, so the heat's going to flow from there and there all the way to the middle. Now what happens down here in the middle? Well, this is where your oil sits. It's down there in the bottom, in the sump, right down in there. And that's right below the cylinders, and of course the heat's flowed down, and this is going to get hot, and, and uh, the whole thing's going to get hot. Now, uh, the thing is with the aluminum, uh, we've already seen that the coefficient of uh, yeah, thermal transfer is higher with the aluminum than this. Actually, it's considerably higher. The aluminum transfers heat uh, much, much, much better than this magnesium alloy. And it's not just that it transfers it better, there is more aluminum. And I've said this in many of the videos, that in order for the heat to transfer, you have to have a conduit. So we have, of course, a piston, which is a conduit. It gets to the case, which is, again, a conduit for spreading the heat around. And the aluminum is thicker. It's thicker and it has a higher transfer rate. So, just like that, bang -o, all this heat that's coming from here, this is where it gets generated, flowing down and into the thing, bang, your oil gets hotter. Okay, so how does that impact what you do as far as mileage makes? Well, one of the things you got to do to make mileage is you've got to jack up your compression. 
Well, if you jack up your compression too high, you're going to knock. So, is this 20 degree temperature differential going to make us knock? Or is it going to help us? All right, this is where it gets kind of crazy. Bear with me. All right, so let's suppose that we had 190 degree oil on a 90 degree day. So there's 100 degrees in temperature difference between the air that's blowing through my doghouse, which would be sitting right over here, and the oil that's passing through it. Got 100 degrees difference. Now I put an aluminum case on here, and instead of 90 to 190 for 100 degrees, it goes to 210. Now I've got 120 degrees worth of difference in the oil passing through. Well, if you pass the same amount of air, because I've done nothing else, it's got the same amount of air going through it, but it's got a greater temperature differential. That means, due to that greater temperature differential, that I will pull more heat out of the oil. So if I'm pulling more heat out of the oil, what does that mean about how much heat is being pulled out of these by the air. See, you're making a particular mileage. You're only burning a certain amount of heat. There's only a certain amount of heat being generated. And you only have to get rid of a certain amount of heat. So if I'm pissing away extra heat, look over through there, out my hole, got my doghouse, goes out the hole, it sits right over there. That means I'm sucking less heat out of my heads by air. Now that sounds like a bad thing, but it isn't a bad thing because the heat that would have been in the heads has been pulled off. What you actually have, because you know it's the same amount of air, you would pull the same amount of heat if the temperatures was the same. But just like you've pulled more heat out here, you pull out less heat here because your heads and your cylinders have dropped in temperature. Now since the heads and the cylinders have dropped in temperature with the aluminum case, don't forget we're talking aluminum case, that extra 20 degrees here has dropped the temperature here. It is not going to be 20 degrees though. So the oil temperature has gone up 20 degrees. Your head temperature did not go down 20 degrees. Uh, I don't want to get into the math, but it's not 20 degrees. You've dropped a few degrees. It is without a doubt going to drop the temperature of your heads and your cylinders a few degrees by putting that aluminum case on there. That's fantastic. That's good for compression. I could run a little bit higher compression with an aluminum case. Now here's why you don't necessarily want to do that. If you look at this thing right here and your oil temperature has gone up by 20 degrees and you don't do anything to this cooling system to drop the temperature of your oil, if all you want to do is run that doghouse, all right, there's more going on here as far as knocking goes than just blowing air over the heads. I mean, that's all the typical Volkswagen guy ever talks about is blowing air. How much freaking air do we blow over these freaking heads? You know, you got to plug up all the holes. Everything's got to go. You put your little, uh, uh, what is that, the Venturi ring around the bore over here so you can flow even more air through. You know, it's like, bang, all we got to do is cool our heads. And that completely ignores one thing. All right, there is a component right there that does not uh, actually get air cooled but must be cooled in order to prevent the system from knocking. Sorry, that particular advice is the piston. You don't see any fins on these things, right? And <laughs> That's right, because they're not air-cooled. These things are oil-cooled. All right, so somebody's going to tell you that this piston, with its rings sitting down inside there, that heat transfers through the rings to, the, to these cylinders. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't even go down that road. All right, one, the rings are very, very thin. Two, they're made out of metals that don't transfer heat very well. And three, they're designed to run on a film of oil. Again, you spewing oil around in here. The oil goes up against the backside of this guy. This guy, this is oil cool. So this guy comes in here and he's bouncing up and down and riding up and down on the oil. And the oil control rings are constantly spewing the oil back into the case and down into the sump. But with that 20 degree hotter oil, this piston is going to be 20 degrees hotter. And that's really bad. Okay, so we've got like, who knows, two, three, four, five degrees drop here. That's great. But you just took the bottom of your combustion chamber and made it 20 degrees hotter. That's an absolute freaking no-no. You cannot let your piston get hot. You have to keep your oil cold. I mean, really cold. Yeah, I mean, seriously. I mean, if you really want to jack your compression up and make some mileage, 
you got to keep your oil down to yeah the, the, the 190 to 200 degree range is really where you want to be if you get back over to there at my 73 i've got an external cooler but i don't have anything special on it it runs off of uh, the plungers and whatnot to go down here to regulate whether or not oil comes up here and runs through it and uh you know it has no valving or whatnot i mean you can buy a uh you can buy a thermal switch which will uh, bypass the cooler but uh, i didn't want to do anything special on my 73. it's not rigged up to keep the temperature at a very low 190 degrees and as a result uh, you know i don't want to run in an aluminum case this again this is brand new case well it was anyway it's got a few thousand miles on it but it was a new magnesium case and uh, my choice for doing that was because I am not running any kind of a thermostat on my oil system. So I can't precisely control what I'm doing here. So if I can't control what I'm precisely doing, you don't want to take a risk on letting your piston get too hot. Now, as far as my 74 over here goes, there's the 74. I will be doing an aluminum case. Because when I do my 74, I'm going to be doing a much more sophisticated cooling system. One, I'm going to be doing a faceplate like this guy. Okay, we're going to pull the stuff off. We're going to run the hoses out over here by the tire. We're going to put the filter. We're going to put the cooler. We're going to put a fan on it. Everything over here controls the oil cooling. The goal being to get the oil to be 190 degrees approximately when the motor warms up. Now you come back over to this side. Now I'm going to be running one of those, uh, you know, one of those uh, 36 horsepower style fan shrouds. You know, they clear the carburetors a little bit easier. And uh, there will be no oil cooler in the back. This guy right here is going to get a block off. You know, I'm not doing a takeoff type system. So this guy will just go from here whoop, right straight over to there. It will block this guy off. I'll have very good flow now for my air. Uh, if you plan on doing a fancy oil cooling system and you can keep your oil temperatures under control go aluminum uh, otherwise hey do like I did and you got to stick with this guy right here you've got to keep the oil temperatures under control or that piston gets hot and you're gonna knock so there you go a whole bunch of great stuff on the aluminum case versus the magnesium case what I'm basically telling you is that unless you're planning on running a, a higher powered external oil cooling system, you're going to want to stick with the magnesium cases and uh, save that aluminum case for when uh, the budget and whatnot allows you to deal with that added oil heat. It can be a good thing, but unless you're prepared to deal with it, don't do it. Anyway, thanks for watching. More later.